All right, here's the deal. The last few years, especially, Epiphone has been stepping up. As someone who's been playing Epiphone for, well, I got my G400 Custom back in 2006 with all my summer job money. We've checked a lot of them out on the channel, talked about a lot more. I've been pretty positive about most of them, not all of them. Definitely not all of them, but there's been a ton of questions from you guys is whoever's signature better than whatever signature Should I get that signature or a prophecy or a 1959 standard? The answer by the way is yes The 1959 standard is probably the best buy from Epiphone right now Anyway, so today I thought we'd try and tackle the gargantuan task of putting together a definitive Epiphone tier list Well definitive I use that word lightly obviously it can't cover every Epiphone ever that's an impossible ask so i'm mainly going to focus on the ones i personally tried the ones that come up a lot and mostly from the last five years but i'll highlight a couple of extra ones that definitely deserve your attention the initial concept was a quick fun little video and i've somehow ended up with about 80 guitars to rank so strap the f in we're going for a ride all right here we go i got the tier list up god there's so many fucking epiphones on here this video is such a mistake already well yeah, gravity in my situation just set in. Let's start with Buren Galat's signature, because that was the first Epiphone signature that I tried and made a video on. And I think I'm going to put this in A tier. It's super cool because it's a metalized 50 style Les Paul Custom, Black Beauty, all mahogany body with a carved mahogany top with a big chunky neck, gold EMGs, and the altered diamond headstock inlay. Very different from your standard metal guitar. It's literally like someone took a 70 year old Les Paul Custom and made it metal. Awesome. All right, one down. Many more to go. Next, Brent Hines Flying V. I did not give this enough credit when it launched. A custom styled V in silver burst. Even the back of the neck and body are silver burst as well for the full silver burst Les Paul custom look. Then Brent Hines signature lace hammer claw pickups. And it's an Epiphone exclusive. It's never been a part of the custom shop's normal lineup. Yeah, I'm gonna put this in S tier. Fuck, I forgot how cool this one was. And I don't even like flying Vs. All right, which one next? Uh. MKH Les Paul Custom, probably A tier as well. On the surface, it's a normal Les Paul Custom with blacked out hardware, which is already pretty cool. And then on the back, Les Paul Access Joint, which I rate higher than the modern joint on his new Origins. And what I love is these are such simple changes, but they make a big difference in modernizing a regular Black Beauty. So yeah, A tier. And don't worry, I'm not gonna rate everything so highly in this video. We've just started out really strong. And then the seven string version of the MKH Les Paul Custom. I'm not gonna lie to you, I loved it when I tried it. It was the first seven string I'd ever played. It's basically exactly the same as the six string version, a Les Paul, but with seven strings down to the 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length. Now, I really didn't have a problem with that at the time. It felt okay to me, probably because the one I played was set up incredibly well. I played another one that was not though, and pitch drift and intonation were all over the place on that seventh string. So on one hand, it's the only 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length seven string guitar that I know of, so that's special. On the other hand, it can be a major pain in the ass without an Evertune. So I'm gonna uh, go ahead and put this in B tier. What next? Uh, the Les Paul SL. The Les Paul SL is a pretty bad guitar. It was Epiphone's attempt to make a sub $100 guitar, and they made one with really shitty pickups and awful hardware. The one I tried didn't feel good to play at all, really. Bad experience, bad specs, insta D tier. <laughs> we move. Another stinker, the Les Paul Studio LT. It's a bolt-on, which I don't really mind, but the cheap ceramic pickups sound like absolute dog shit. Playability was awful too. It just was not fun or inspiring to play whatsoever. And just as an extra cherry on top, the tuning stability sucked too. I would not waste your time or your money on this one. Yeah, D tier. F this guitar. <laughs> Brendan Small Snow Falcon, Gibson pickups, white phenolic fingerboard, looked awesome, felt awesome, and it was only like 800 new at the time as well. Super unique, easy S tier. Again, despite it being a flying V, just a sick guitar. Dave Rude's flying V followed a similar vibe, almost like they used the leftover Snow Falcons. They didn't though, for the record. Wasn't as big a fan of this one. The phenolic fingerboard was still great. The red pick guard though, controversial. And then the Pro Buckers, probably A tier, because it's like a slightly less good version of the Snow Falcon. Lee Malia's RD Artisan. Man, this was a really cool one too. As far as I know, this is the only time Epiphone has ever made an RD. Super underrated shape, so already this is at least an A tier for me. But then the electronics are so cool. Gibson USA pickups and the 84 TLM bridge is one of the best pickups Gibson's ever made. The P94 in the neck is a nice touch. 
and then accessible from the back is a dummy coil that kicks in and cancels the hum if you're using the neck or splitting the bridge. Such a good idea. Why is that not more guitars? S tier. While we're at it, may as well rank the other Lee Malia models. That's a tug twister. Lee Malia models. Lee Malia models. Lee Malia models. The Explorer gets A tier because it's got the same electronics, the same artisan theme, but it's not as cool a shape as the RD. Plus, regular sized tuning keys they used to make the headstock pretty cramped for tuning. And then the Les Paul. This also gets A tier. Love the pickups, the ornate artisan theme, and love Les Pauls, but it doesn't have the dummy coil, so it can't go S tier either. I'm not gonna lie, this tier list is looking pretty top heavy at the moment. So let's check out the regular inspired by Gibson production guitars. You've got the Les Paul standard 50s and 60s. The big deal with these was Epiphone tried to get their guitars closer to Gibson spec with CTS pots and Graftech nuts. That was huge. Before when you bought an Epiphone, you basically had to count on replacing the nut right after you got it home. That being said, that was a couple years ago. Graph Tech is pretty much industry standard these days, and the Muddy Pro Buckers still let the guitars down, in my opinion. I'm gonna go with C tier, because they're acceptable, they pass. C's get degrees, because they don't really have anything that really stands out. They're kind of the baseline. They're the standard. Then the Inspired by Gibson Les Paul Custom, Eh, B tier. The big thing with this version is they finally added an ebony board. They had rosewood before, and that just looks bizarre on a Les Paul Custom. Uh, it still has the weird Epiphone D-shaped neck though, so C tier. That's kind of harsh. It's better than the standards, but it just doesn't feel quite right with that D-shaped neck. But the blackjack version looks especially good, so maybe that one is B tier. Then the Les Paul Modern, asymmetric neck shape, all the crazy tone options, ebony fingerboard, metallic tops. It's better than the Les Paul Custom. It goes B tier. It's a really enjoyable guitar, despite the dumb modern neck heel and the pro buckers. Inspired by Gibson Firebird. B tier? Genuinely, I wasn't expecting them to do a proper neck through Firebird. In fact, when it was first announced, the website had them listed as set neck before it was corrected. It's just impressive that Epiphone does a neck through at that affordable price. SG Standard 61 Maestro. C tier. Love the Maestro Vibrola, even though it's a death <laughs> sentence for tuning stability. But Epiphone tries to hide the multi-piece body with weird mahogany veneers on the front and back. It's just, yeah, it's just weird C tier. Then the Inspired by Gibson SG Custom. Yeah, it has Epiphone pickups, but they're Alnico Classic Pros, which actually don't sound too bad. I love how this is a standard part of the lineup now. SG with a bound ebony fingerboard. Uh, it's such a vibe and it's not too pricey either, so B tier. Then the Slash Collection Les Paul Standard. I'm tempted to rank this one pretty high because the one that I have has a great figured top and the man himself signed and drew rock and fucking roll on it, but it's basically a Les Paul Standard 50s, except more expensive. And unlike the previous Plus Top Pro, it doesn't even have a signature Seymour Duncan's. Kind of underwhelming. It's basically a Les Paul Standard 50s, so C tier. But Slash's Plus Top Pro, that's a sick signature. Classic Epiphone, the top is way oversaturated compared to the Gibson version, but it actually worked really well here. It gave a nice contrast to the dark ebony board. And that ebony board is something even the Gibson Anaconda Burst didn't have. And for pickups, it had Slash's Seymour Duncans. So for those reasons, I'm gonna have to say A tier. That ebony board on a standard and in green really sets it apart way better than the current Slash standards. Now Slash's Firebird, I'm kind of torn on this one. On one hand, the concept is awesome. Firebird with a flame maple top, slashes pickups, banjo tuners. On the other hand, the one I played was kind of a lemon and had weird bubbly finish issues. And a set neck Firebird instead of neck through is kind of wrong. I'm gonna put this one in B tier. Probably would have been A tier if my experience wasn't a sour one. Then slashes AFD special two. These have been around forever. You see these in every guitar center, every Sam Ash. Now I've only played one of these, but it was kind of hot garbage. Listen, I understand what they're trying to do here. Invite new players inspired by Slash to pick up a guitar at a good price. The one I played was just a bad guitar though. Would have probably done more to put someone off guitar than to stick with it. And come on, only one volume and one tone doesn't even make it an attractive mod platform. Not a fan, D tier for me. Then the DC Pro, carved top double cut. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in C tier. Interesting ideas, same specs as the inspired by Gibson standards. Solid, cool headstock inlay but nothing super special. What next? The Inspired by 1955 Les Paul Custom. Dude, I loved this guitar. Satin or aged gloss all over, felt great. Big chunky neck, Gibson P90 soap bars, and a case with an obnoxious Pepto-Bismol pink interior. I still maintain this is one of the best, if not the best, 
guitar Epiphone has ever made. And I have a soft spot for the older headstock shape, so easy S tier. I should have kept that one. Another one I should have kept, the 1959 Les Paul Standard. Epi's first collaboration with the Gibson Custom Shop, satin or H-gloss finish, Gibson USA humbuckers, best value for money Epiphone currently makes, and another pink plush case. It doesn't feel like an actual 59, right? It doesn't have the nitro finish, but those specs, that case nailed on S tier. And then I guess we got to put Joe Bonamassa's Lazarus right next to it because it's essentially the exact same guitar, same price, same pickups, just in a different color and with Joe Bonamassa's name on it. And then we have to talk about the 1961 Les Paul SG standard. This guitar is an SEO nightmare, but man, I had such high hopes for this guitar. It's the second collaboration between Epiphone and the Gibson Custom Shop. And the 59 standard was so good. And I like it. It's got a slim taper C instead of the normal Epiphone D. Gibson burst buckers, the age gloss finish, and it doesn't have the weird mahogany veneer that the SG standards do. But how is this the same price as the Les Paul? SGs are always more affordable. The SG standard is 150 bucks less than the Les Paul standard. And I haven't been consistent with this tier list and taking pricing into account, but come on, the comparison is right there. I have to ding at some points. It's A tier instead of S tier. And because we've already ranked the Lazarus, I think we have to take on the epic side quest of ranking all of Joe Bonamassa's signatures now. <laughs> God damn, he's got a lot. Okay, here we go. Joe Bonamassa's Firebird 1. Honestly, I think it's his coolest one. Neck through Firebird with a single Firebird pickup, which is not the same as a mini humbucker. Such a rare spec combo. Cool color, but it's so bare bones, so I'm gonna put it in A tier. Controversial, because I said it was his coolest one, and then I ranked it below Lazarus. To be fair, Lazarus only got into S tier because it was grandfathered in with the regular 1959 Les Paul standard. So, whatever, we move. Then he's got a bunch of Les Paul standards. A gold top, a Pelham blue, one in green with the Bigsby. Borderline B, C tier, because there's nothing really super special about them but they've got the mismatched knobs, Gibson USA burst buckers, which elevate them above the guitars in C tier. Okay, you know what? Gibson USA pickups, I'm gonna put them in B tier. Especially the green one with the Bigs B, that's a solid B tier. And then he's got semi hollows, the ES335 and his most recent ES335. Honestly, not a huge fan of semi hollows, but for those of you that are, it's great. Joe Bonamassa generally puts Gibson USA pickups in his signatures. I guess I'll go B tier for both of these. There's nothing that really stands out on either, and that could be my complete semi-hollow ignorance talking. Although in fairness, the 335 does have a Maestro Vibrola, which is pretty rare on that model. And yeah, the Gibson USA Burst Buckers are solid. That being said, one Joe Bonamassa signature that did not come with Gibson pickups is his Black Beauty. That's such a shame because a three pickup Black Beauty Les Paul is fucking awesome. And Epiphone used to make one, but again, it came with a rosewood board. This one is with Ebony. And so you know what? As a Les Paul fanatic, I'm still gonna put it in B tier. The yellowed faux aged look to the binding in the big headstock diamond was really cool. And finally, his Amos Flying V. Something that always pops into my head when I think about the Amos Flying V is that in the comments, someone was like, what? I don't wanna buy Joe Bonham on his anus. I mean, he's got a point, I guess. I don't wanna buy Joe Bonham on his anus either. Anyways, Karina, cool, but pro buckers, Boo. I mean, it's kind of just a reskinned Epiphone Karina Flying V, so, eh, C tier. Moving on from JB to someone he inspired, Jared James Nichols' Old Glory is awesome. It's a Les Paul Jr. in 50s Les Paul custom form. Big chunky neck, satin finish, Seymour Duncan P90 pickup. I love the simplicity, and I'm gonna go with A tier. Kind of because I have to put his other signature, the Gold Glory, above it in S tier. Started off as a factory accident, but a full gold Les Paul custom with the single exclusive Seymour Duncan P90 dog ear is genius. And speaking of genius, Bjorn Galatz Jotun. Same specs as his previous signature, except gold pickup rings, and on the back of the guitar is a perfectly positioned built-in bottle opener. Instant S tier, I will hear no arguments about this one. The next one is instant S tier too, Matt Hafey's Six string snowfall. I'm still very mad at myself for not picking this one up when it was available. Access neck heel, all white, white phenolic fingerboard. It's the only time they've ever done that on a Les Paul. I love this one so much and they're so fucking expensive now. And just like the black version, the seven string gets dinged a tier for the shorter scale length. But again, the visual theme, the white phenolic fingerboard, still a really cool guitar. I guess that means we should talk about the current Origins signatures then. And I'll put both the six and seven string in a tier. I really like the new custom fishman pickups, the locking tuners, and the 7 has a 25 and a half inch scale length now, but the modern neck heel and super slim flat necks 
don't do it as much for me as the specs on the previous versions. Really classy looking metal guitars though. I really like the seven that I have in white. Alright, we're starting to look a bit top heavy again, so let's talk some Epi Originals. The Crestwood, the Wilshire, and the Coronet. I'm just gonna group them all together in C tier. I like how Epiphone is revisiting their heritage, reissuing original designs from when they were an independent company using what they call the Bikini Bottom logo. And they're really affordable, they're just kind of really ugly. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Onto another original Epiphone series, the Muses. These are part of the Inspired by Gibson Modern Collection, even though this is a series Gibson has never made. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of really love these. Metallic colors lifted from the cosmetic industry and necks based on the ones found on 70s Gibsons. So that's a thin C shape with a narrower nut width. None of that D-shaped nonsense. The Les Paul even has a thinner body with a belly cut a la an ESP Eclipse. Crazy colors, 70s necks, and they're less than 500 new too. Yeah, I'm putting both the SG and the Les Paul in B tier. Another modern original series we have to talk about is the Epiphone Prophecy series. It's their stab at a really modern take on classic shapes. And we'll start with the latest iteration. These are real fun guitars. Satin, highly saturated black burst finishes with color matched abalone in the inlays. Exclusive Fishman fluences with multiple voices based on Gibson USA pickups. The locking tuners, the ebony fingerboards, the 24 jumbo frets and asymmetric shaped necks are also great. Really, really likes these guitars and pricing is pretty good for how much spec you're getting. So I'm going to put the V and the SG into A tier and then the Les Paul into S tier, not just because it's a Les Paul, but because it's got the full four knob control layout so you can set each pickup voice individually. That's really cool. And the Extura into S tier as well because it's got the coolest color, purple, and since the shape is like an extra sleek modern take on the Explorer. I'm also going to rank previous versions of the Prophecy because they were cool in their own ways. Each is a different modern take on the classic shapes and there are a lot of deals to be had on Reverb for these. And I have fond memories of the first Prophecy. They had Dirty Fingers, some of Gibson's best ever pickups. Ebony Fingerboards also had the 24 Jumbo frets. Body meets the neck at the 18th fret for better upper fret access. Glossed tops to show off the finishes and then the back of the neck with satin for playability. Simplified control schemes, no locking tuners, but those dirty fingers, ah, they're so good. Cheesy lightning inlays as well, but you know what, fuck it, I'm putting these in A tier. And then the last generation Prophecy had two Les Pauls. There's the EX version with active EMG pickups and the GX version with Gibson USA pickups. Unique to this version is it had a flatter 14 inch fingerboard radius. I think that's the only time Epiphone's done that. They retained the gloss tops with the satin necks and they were supposed to have ebony boards. Even Epiphone's launch video said so, but I've only ever seen them in the wild with rosewood and that's a bummer. Another bummer is that for the GX, the dirty fingers were dropped for standard 490, 498 humbuckers and it was given a terrible clown burst. They had the cool inlays though, and the blue quilt looks really good. I'm gonna put them both in B tier. They're not bad at all if you can get one for a good price, but I consider them a tier lower than the other versions. And now they're even doing signature prophecies as well. Uh, Jerry Cantrell has a signature prophecy, Les Paul. And this is S tier, I guess? Because there's nothing really new spec wise. It's essentially the Les Paul Prophecy, which I've already put in S tier. It looks very cool in white with custom inlays. Let's ignore the fact that Epiphone's just slapped Jerry Cantrell's name on a prophecy he will never play. And he's also got an Epiphone version of his Wino Les Paul Custom. Honestly, look, a wine red Les Paul Custom is cool. Uncovered humbucker for that hot rotted look. Kind of disappointing though. They put Pro Buckers in there not Gibson pickups. And a big feature of the custom shop wino is the piezo, and that's missing from the Epiphone version as well. This is borderline C tier, B tier, because it's kind of just a reskin of the regular Epi Les Paul Custom, but ah, it's a cool reskin. Yeah, no, C tier. I feel bad because I really do like wine red Les Paul Customs. It's just missing too much of what made the higher end version special. And it's not like they couldn't put a piezo in there either. They've done it with the Alex Lifeson Les Paul, which also has an access neck heel, belly cut, Floyd Rose 1000. You can split the pickups. They've loaded this guitar up with unique features. I'll forgive the Pro Buckers in this for the price. Floyd Rose, piezo, access neck heel, and it's not outrageously priced. That's an S tier Epiphone. I know, I've been fairly generous with the ratings, especially when it comes to signature guitars. But Billy Joe Armstrong's Les Paul Jr. is a solid 
C tier. Nothing special, no ebony fingerboard like his Gibson version had. It's got an Epiphone P90. They could have put a Gibson pickup in there because it's essentially just a reskinned Epi Les Paul Jr. So yeah, there's not really too much to talk about with this one. Moving on. And kind of in the same vein, Tony Iommi's Monkey. There were such high hopes for this. It looks the part, it's got the right plastics, the adjustable tailpiece, chrome covered P90s, but spec wise, no Gibson pickups. Again, it's just another reskin, this time of the SG Special and it's almost double the price. Big C tier guitar. And it's a real shame because Tony Iommi's previous SG Custom was really cool. Ebony fingerboard with custom cross inlays, Gibson USA pickups with no exposed pole pieces. I mean, for me, this is an A tier. SG Customs are already awesome. And one with Chrome hardware and Gibson USA pickups, even better. Another custom styled one, Lizzie Hale's Explorer. This is an easy A tier. Look at it, that is a classy, Classy Explorer. Love the bound ebony fingerboard with block inlays, the gold everywhere. Super unique. It's an A tier. And while we're on the topic of Explorers again, Brendan Small's Ghost Horse. Sick Galacticon burst top, satin back with the nice prophecy cutaway. Gibson USA pickups, non-recessed Floyd, bound ebony fingerboard. Brendan Small doesn't miss with his signature. This is another S tier. Richie Faulkner's Flying V, another custom styled signature. Ebony board, Floyd Rose on a Flying V, and EMG pickups. It's another fun one for sure, and it looks awesome. Custom headstock inlay and everything. Floyd Rose and brush chrome EMGs. It has to go A tier. Joan Jett's Olympic now. Man, this is an ugly, unapologetically punk guitar. Specs aren't great. Outline looks like a shovel, but it's Joan Jett. I'm putting it B tier. Nancy Wilson's Fanatic. This is a wild one. What a strange looking guitar uh, with the melted single cut outline, the angled bridge pickup with a chrome slanted pickup ring, but it's got an ebony board on like a $500 Epiphone and it's got a damn Firebird pickup in the neck. Wild, wild A tier guitar. Noel Gallagher's Riviera. This unfortunately follows Epiphone's current worrying trend of making high price signatures with no real spec upgrades over the base models. Yeah, I don't know what's up with this one or why it's so expensive. That's a C tier. Emily Wolf's Sheridan Stealth is probably my favorite Epiphone semi-hollow. Aged gloss finish all over, awesome. And it's the only Epiphone I know of that has lightly aged hardware out of the factory too. It's even got little abalone lightning bolts in the inlays. A lot of cool stuff going on with the aesthetics, but the rest of the specs aren't too outrageous. So I'm gonna put this in B tier. And you can't talk semi-hollows without talking about BB King's Lucille. Whenever I see a Gibson or an Epiphone ES, immediately I think BB King. And specifically Lucille, the guitar on the album cover of Riding with the King. It looks so classy. It's got the TP6 tailpiece, the six position baritone switch, and no F holes in the body. Iconic guitar, unique specs. I'm sticking this guy in A tier. We're getting into the final stretch now. The last current in production guitar on the list, I believe, is Tommy Thayer's Electric Blue. Or it could be discontinued already. I don't know. I haven't seen it in a while. But man, this guitar, crazy bright blue finish with massive sparkles on the entire guitar. Weaker minded men may have chickened out and only done the top. That's not what they've done here, and it's so much better for it. Then it's got chrome pickup rings, dual Seymour Duncan JBs, the bridge even has custom blue bobbins. This is an epic head turner. Easy S tier. And his previous signatures are cool too, the White Lightning and Spaceman Les Pauls. They're basically specced exactly the same, just in different colors. Neither of them are as cool as the full bodied blue sparkle. White Lightning even came in Explorer form, which I definitely forgot about when I was putting this tier list together. But yeah, A tier for the rest of them because they're just not as cool as the blue sparkle. And now Tom DeLonge's signature. Apparently these have now absolutely spiked in price now that Blink is back together. Don't like how it looks at all. His Strat will always be my favorite, but it's got a Dirty Fingers bridge in a semi hollow and it's Blink. I kind of hate myself for it but I'm putting it in S here. Then Johnny A's custom is one of the more interesting signatures. It's an Epiphone semi-hollow that looks more like a Schecter. And then it's got a Bigsby, Gibson pickups, and an ebony fingerboard. Man, this is another A tier. Vivian Campbell's Holy Diver Les Paul is another sick one. DiMarzio X2N humbuckers. You almost never see DiMarzio stock in Epiphones. Brass nut, brass neural control knobs. It's getting pretty crowded. But I have to put it in A tier too. And the only other Epiphone I know of that came with DeMarcio's is Ace Freely's Budokan Les Paul. Triple super distortions, 
Lightning Bolt inlays. Oh, but that terrible Clown Burst, man. Uh, lets it down. It's gotta go B tier. And a quick PSA, by the way. A lot of people are convinced there's a Blue Sparkle version. There isn't. At least not Epiphone. They were rumored to be making an Epiphone version of his Gibson Blue Sparkle. They never did, and there are scammers on eBay that have been trying to pass off Blue Sparkle Chibsons as Epiphones. Don't buy them. Peter Frampton's Phoenix Les Paul also had three pickups. It had an ebony fingerboard. Those three uncovered pickups are pro buckers though. That puts it in B tier. Arguably the king of discontinued Epiphone signatures is Zach Wilde's Bullseye Les Paul Custom. I know he's got his own company now, but the Bullseye Les Paul is so iconic. I remember it being front and center of so many Epiphone campaigns, Guitar Center campaigns. It's got the look for sure. Gold truss rod cover, EMGs, raw maple neck. There was also an orange buzzsaw version, that's my favorite, and a camo version with a maple fingerboard, but the Bullseye has always been the most recognizable. Just for how iconic it is, it'd be a shoe in for S tier, if not for the rosewood fingerboard on a custom. Ah, fuck, we have another A tier. All right, you know what though? Zach Wild ZV, man, it is an ugly guitar, but it's so fucking metal, but it's so ugly, but it's got that raw maple neck. Ah, uh, B tier, fuck it, I don't know. And Zach Wild's most infamous signature, the Graveyard Disciple. I am genuinely unsure whether to put this thing into S tier or D tier. On one hand, it's so out there. It is a fucking bold metal guitar. On the other hand, it's pretty damn cheesy. But if we take out the looks, the specs are really good. EMG pickups, ebony fingerboard, and a Floyd Rose original on this Epiphone. As many of you pointed out, even the Jackson American series doesn't come with the German Floyd Rose. But it's so out there and it's got the specs, I'm putting this in S tier. We're down to the final two now, and this is where I'm gonna go way out of scope that I set for the video. But I had to include my 2006 G400 Custom. This was my main guitar for a while, it's all beat up. But it was the guitar that got me into Epiphone, it would be wrong not to include it. And the sentimental bias is really strong with this one, but I think it's a B tier guitar. As much as I give the current generation Pro Buckers shit, they're so much better than the stock pickups that this thing came with. The nut was shit, the pig iron bridge was shit, but it did have Grover tuners and the Maestro Vibrola. The main thing about it though, it was made in Korea, so the neck is nice and round, none of that D-shaped nonsense, and the build quality feels better, noticeably better than the current Epiphones, in my opinion. And the last guitar on the list that I had to include is the 1986 Les Paul 1 that I've got. What a weird, weird guitar. It's a result of Gibson's unholy experiments in the 80s to try and gain ground on the Super Strats. Honestly, I want to put this in C tier so badly because the neck is great. It's that skinny Norlin neck that I love on my 70s Les Pauls. And there are some interesting ideas like a longer 25 inch scale length, but the build quality is not great. It is not great at all. And the Steinberger Tremolo has an inherent factory design flaw that causes them to bend forward permanently over time. It is definitely not a good guitar, it's a solid D tier. For all its flaws though, it is a good representation of how far Epiphone has come since then to where they are now. That's a nice polite way to put it. And that will do it for my definitive Epiphone tier list as of November 1st, 2022. Definitely some controversial calls in there and I can't wait to be destroyed for him in the comments. But what do you think? Do you agree with my picks? Why, why not? What changes would you make? We'll definitely have to update this list as time goes on, even maybe before the end of the year. Don't know when they're launching, but new Epiphones are on the horizon. Adam Jones has his Silver Burst custom with Seymour Duncans. Dave Mustaine has a prophecy coming out. But for now, that is my tier list. This is the end of the video. This was supposed to be a super quick video and then 80 fucking Epiphones later. It was definitely fun though, so let me know what other tier lists you'd like to see. Import brands, single cut tier list. And thanks to my wonderful patrons and YouTube members for supporting the channel, whose names are on the screen right now. If you like what I do, want to support the channel as well, link to the Patreon community will be in the description. And then below the video, you can join the channel. YouTube members also get custom emotions emoticons like High Integrity and Justice for Pringle. But in the meantime, social media, merch, and Discord server links are in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome, and I will see you for the next video.